edition of RPV City Talk. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. And I'm Maria Soraya. We are here today at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center for Well of a Day, an event that gets bigger and bigger every year, Liz. Bigger and better. 29 years. This event is co-sponsored by the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and the nonprofit group Los Serenos de Point Vicente. Lots going on. Lots going on. Lots of food. Lots of people. Lots of people having a good time. Let's go out and check it out, yeah. Liz. Of course, always, Maria, this is about celebrating the migration of the whale. They're yeah. seeing whales out there. Lots of whales today. Lots right. of whales. All right, get ready for a whale of a time. This has just been an incredible day. And from the San Pedro High marching band that just got finished playing, the jets going over, and uh, actually I think they were World War II planes, and uh, the sailboats, it's been just spectacular. It's, it's amazing because I think this event gets bigger and bigger every year. People hear about it and then they come to the PVIC and this is one of the number one places to even watch whales in the whole state. Yeah, this is the premier gray watch type because you know we jet out into the water. So it's just been, uh, and it's been a fantastic whale year this year too. Yes. Now, how many whales have you seen over time? Um, I think the highest year we had was just above 3,000 whales and we're above 1,000 this year right now. And is this the busiest time, not including whale of a day, but for the watchers to be out as well? Or? This is a good time for spotting whales because they're coming both north and south where we are, so passing by, which is why we hold whale of a day on this day, the first Saturday in March. We have a great turnout today. It looks like uh, over 2,000 people. Spectacular weather. We did the best we could with the weatherman on that, and it came out okay. The whales are showing up, the people are showing up, and you have every kind of vendor here. What is sort of the goal when you put this all together? This is 29 years of doing this. Well, the goal really is to put something on uh, an event for the community that lets them have a lot of fun mixed with education at the same time. Talk about your organization, Los Serenos, and the role you serve here in our community. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we are officially in charge of being the docents for the Point Vicente Interpretive Center. But in addition to that, we lead hikes uh, in the open spaces around our RPV. Viewers watching that maybe have never come to PVIC and to the museum here, what do you recommend in terms of just, obviously just to enjoy it, but in terms of what, what to see? Well, I think uh, the best thing is, is the whole thing. Just don't miss a bit of it. Uh, take the, the loop around the parking lot, make sure you see the animal halfway house in the back where they where the people rescue uh, wild animals that have been kept in captivity and are not capable of surviving uh, in the wild again. Well, Mona, this is definitely one of the biggest events the city throws, and you are a big part of that. Just talk about the preparation for the event today. Well, it is a lot of work, but honestly, it's such a pleasure because of all of our volunteers and our organization booths, they make it easy for us. How do you decide which booths get to come back every year, just so you have a variety? Well, that's a really easy one, because if they're interested in the environment, they support everything in the community, volunteer-wise, we want them here. So everybody's here for the one common cause, is to support our environment. And such a great day to watch the whales. We've already heard the bell ringing back there. And so many people that come back to RPV every year just for this day. Yeah, that's a really great thing. It really has become a family tradition to people to come back. And people come from all over the country, really. They want to, I want to make sure that I'm out there on whale of a day. So we take a lot of pride in that. You know, and talk about a family event. I mean, we've, we've got the, the jumpies for kids, the face painting, and then, of course, for the adults, we have the silent auction items. This is uh, quite an undertaking. Yeah, you didn't, don't forget my favorite, those llamas. They're an awful lot of fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, how do you decide on the llamas? That's interesting. Well, they're part of the wildlife way station, so they're really into protecting um, animals that are, you know, going extinct or they're having problems, and they do a lot of um, care in bringing animals back to health, so that, that it's great that they come out. Somebody had just asked me how come the San Pedro Band comes out to play, so I'm asking you that question. That has been a long time tradition. Um, you know, I think it just happened through a connection in the community, and you know, they are so generous with their time, and it's just a tradition. What's your favorite part of this whole event? I know you don't really get too much time to enjoy because you're so busy working, but when you look around and walk around, what do you uh, what do you like the most? 
You know what, Maria, my favorite thing is the fact that everybody that's here is for one reason, because they care about our ocean and marine environment. And though everybody has a different role in it, they're all here for that one reason. That is my number one favorite part of Whale of a Day. are friends because you've met here while watching and I know every year you come back and you're from Colorado. Mm -hmm. Since 1983 I've been coming every year from Colorado. Wow. Just for the whale of a day. Sometimes I'll do it twice, so, uh, you know, two times. We used to do the whale watch out of the Cabrillo and then when she moves she comes here with us all the time. Okay, now how is the whale watching ladies today? Well, it's great so far. I've seen whales at least now. So. All right, I'm now sitting over here in the council corner where it's ask your city council any question you want. I'm here with council member Jim Knight. Are you uh, hearing uh, from the community? Are they asking you questions? You know, interestingly enough, I've been here for quite a while and I haven't really uh, heard many complaints. So I must be, we must be doing something right. I don't know. <laughs> you, must be, you definitely are doing something right. And of course, being here at Whale of a Day, we want to focus on happy things, things to celebrate. You've been in many of these. Oh, yeah. Yes, I've followed this for many, many years, and it's a fantastic event that the city puts on. And I want to thank the docents as well. They uh, put a, they're very responsible for a lot of what goes on here, and it's a wonderful organization for the city um, that provides a great service in terms of educating the public about the beautiful natural resources we have in our city. Um, also, this Whale of a Day Extra Special, this is the city's 40th anniversary. We also have the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy celebrating 25 years and, in fact, a 100th year anniversary of the Vanderlips coming in and, and purchasing um, the P Peninsula property. These are huge milestones. Talk about these, how significant this all is for our community. Well, they're all significant in their own way. Um, the Obviously, uh, when Mr. Vandalup came from the East Coast out here and saw the beauty of, of this area. He recognized its natural beauty from, from day one, 100 years ago. And then, of course, the people that lived in the city also recognized the beauty of the city and uh, were fighting the county in terms of destroying that beauty and formed the city uh, and to, to bring local jurisdiction back to us uh, and to preserve that. And, of course, Go ahead, continue on down the road with the Land Conservancy. Bill Ayler uh, uh, f uh, had this concept of still preserving the beauty we have in the city, the natural uh, natural environment we have, and uh, helped uh, launch the idea for the Land Conservancy, which has been one of the more successful land conservancies up and down the state of California. It's been very effective, very uh, very active in preserving what we have. You're not just looking for whales here at Whale of a Day, you're going to find your friendly llamas. we got Pete here to tell us all about, he brought his team of llamas with his crew. What's going on here with your llamas? Oh well, we were invited by Mona from uh, the Whale of a Day, and we've been here about the last two, three years, and we really enjoy coming, and we're apparently the hit of the party here. <laughs> Yeah, and now Pete, um, talk about your organization. You're with the Wildlife Waste Station. What is that? We're a 160-acre animal sanctuary. We take in wild and uh, exotic animals, and we have about 500 animals at, the, at present, lions, tigers, and bears, and wolves, and of course, llamas, the hit of the show. And people are welcome to come up, but right now we're kind of closed for res renovations. And these are very friendly llamas. Yes, they're friendly. <laughs> if you tease them, they will spit on you, but it washes off. Let's see if I can make that. Who do we got next to you? Who's your buddy with you right now, Pete? Tequila. Wow. She's she's the matriarch of the of our herd. And, and Tequila's friend is Chicha. He's a male. It's the Chicha is a Peruvian drink. One of my team members named named him Chicha when he was a baby. And we are here educating the public about llamas and wildlife. Like, what are some of the questions people want to know about these guys? Do they spit? <laughs> That's our main one. Uh, what, what, what uses are they? They are for, they can be used for uh, guard llamas, pets, show, and their fiber can be used for almost anything you want to make, basically. Shirts, pants, hats. And 
Hey, do people want to find more out about your organization, what's the best way to, to look you up? Uh, we have a website, which is www.wildlifewaystation, or just call up and, and ask for information. And we have a volunteer program, which you can see. And you come up every, uh, the first, second Tuesday of the month, or not Tuesday, every second Saturday of the month, and come up and have an orientation. An orientation, they'll tell you all about the wildlife way station, and you have a tour of the ranch, and you get to see all the animals. Wonderful. What do you enjoy most about Whale of a Day? You said this is your third time coming. Everything. The, the people, you know, the view. It's just a great, a great experience for us and the animals. Lisa, tell us about this whale watching season. We are seeing a lot of whales this year. Why? Well, we had early gray whales. We had gray whales coming earlier, just like last year. Okay. And part of that reason, we think, is because the ice in the Arctic froze early. Gray whales are bottom feeders, so a lot of those whales in those particular feeding grounds left early to come down the coast. But not only that, we had an incredible year last year. We had uh, 260 northbound calves, and we think quite a few of those did survive. That with their moms, that's 45% of the whales that we saw in the northbound last year. And juveniles do prefer the near shore route. So about um, we had these whales who were calves last year are now coming up the coast very close to shore. So many people coming out here for a whale of a day this year, and everybody wants to catch a glimpse of a whale. Yeah, we have seen three today. We had a couple around 6 o'clock, and we had one little guy about 25 minutes ago, but a boat ran right over where the whale had been. The whale wasn't showing much. It's not like the boat knew they were there, and they immediately stopped, so we were a little concerned. But we did see him come up later. We've had a fin whale. We've had bottlenose and common dolphin, too. Now, when people come up and they want to look for the whales, what are the signs? What, what do you tell, tell people to watch for? Well, today is an exceptionally calm day. It's the ideal day, a perfect whale of a day. Okay. And what we look for is the blow of the whale. And I actually spotted the last whale by looking, seeing it underwater. I saw a brown object underwater, and it turned out it was the orangey, lice colored, covered head of the gray whale. So then the whale comes up, it exhales usually above the water. This whale actually did it underwater. Okay. The blow or breath goes up about eight to 10 feet in the air. So we call that the blow. And then the whale arches its back and goes down again. And sometimes it will fluke or throw its tail called the flukes up in the air. So we look for any disturbance on the water, a smooth circle called a fluke print that marks where the whale went down. So all of those things. And also whale watching boats. If we see whale watching boats stop, then we look there too. I don't think I've ever asked you, how did you become involved in, in all, all of this? Well, I was taking a marine biology class at Cal State Long Beach, okay. and my really good friend, uh, John Haining, was going there at the time, and he took me to a whale watch class way back in the day, and I really, really loved it. And now he was the one of the instructors for the class, now I'm one of the instructors for the class, so sort of a full circle. And I also started up this Gray Whale Census at Marineland, actually, this is our 30th year. Um, and we've been doing it every year since. It's the only world's full-time gray whale census. So we watch from the beginning of December until somewhere in the later part of May. It's interesting because this is one of these things where you're actually hands-on because it's not just something you're reading in a book, you're actually out here in the environment. Yeah, it's a great example of citizen science. We've got about 80 different volunteers involved, about a core of about 15 who come multiple times a week. And we have, for example, the same crew on Saturday mornings every Saturday and the same crew on Sunday afternoons, the same crew early on Wednesday. And that gives us consistency over the years. So we're able to compare one year to another to look at trends and, and differences and similarities between the years. What kind of things have you seen over the years of the trends and so forth? Oh, boy. Um, we started out, well, I started in 1984, <clears throat> and the census had been running a couple years before that, but it was just for a couple of weeks. Okay. And I thought, well, this sounds like something that should continue. This is great. And I was all young, full of energy. And I started it, and it happens to be the biggest year we ever had. And it was a La Nina year. We didn't have any storms. We had hardly any fog. Almost all the whales were within a mile of shore. And I thought, well, this will be easy. And we saw 3,412 gray whales that year. That was by far the biggest year we've ever had. Wow. So, yeah. So it, it was very easy to get addicted to. And because these people contribute to this, this can be used and sent to the an International Whaling Commission, for example, on how the gray whales are doing. They were taken off the endangered species list in 1994, but they encounter a lot of dangers going through our area, such right. as entanglements, ship strikes, 
uh, even pollution levels and a lot of noise in the environment. So we need to really keep an eye on what's happening with their population. Very good. Well, this is definitely a success of an event. Again, we have so many people out here. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. We stick out uh, on a promontory here, and the gray whales will come from, say, Point Magoo, and many of them will cut across the Santa Monica Basin here, go right into Point Vicente, sometimes even into our kelp bed, and then head off along the coast. So this is one of the best places in Southern California, and actually in all of California, to see gray whales come close to shore, particularly in Southern California. We've had them come into coves here, we've had them nurse, we've seen mating, we've seen breaching, spy hopping, really incredible encounters. Is there one thing that you could say over the years that was the most exciting for you? or? Well, I'm sort of biased also to killer whales. I run the California Killer Whale Project and I know the individual killer whales, I know who's who. So one of the most exciting things was seeing killer whales coming down from Monterey and actually coming along our coast here. This one particular family, the CA-51s, they've got a, a grandmother, her four kids, and her two grandkids. And they came down here 10 times last season, and four times this season was part of the family. So that's really exciting for me to see killer whales and get out on the water. They're sort of like almost friends because I get to know them personally, their personalities and so on. So that was extremely exciting, but we've seen um, sperm whales, we've seen blue whales, we've had fin whale today. So we have over 15 different species of marine mammals, in fact many that some people thought weren't even in this area and we end up seeing them here. So it's very exciting. Wow, very cool. Well thank you so much for spending some time with us and enjoy. We'll wait for that bell to ring again. You're very welcome and anyone actually can help um, help us in this project. Good. They can just come with binoculars and patients and a lot of layers of clothes and sunblock okay. because it takes time. I mean sometimes we may see 10 whales in 10 minutes and sometimes it might be two whales that are 10 hours apart. You never know. Right. But it's the consistency, the help of all these people, just a lot of people coming by, stopping. Next time they come by, they bring binoculars. The next time they bring a chair, and pretty soon yeah. they're one of our regulars. So we invite everybody to come out. You don't have to have any experience. Okay. We'll train you uh, as far as what animals to see and what to look for. You can use help from the public all the time. We really appreciate it. Well, I'm now being joined by our councilman, Brian Campbell, and his son, Ian, who is today wearing his Yankees hat because he's a whale of a baseball Baseball player, I understand. Are you having a whale of a time here? Yes. What do you like about whale of a day? We can talk to your dad after. Um, I really like how they set up a bunch of stuff, and I like because um, me and my dad saw like a seal down there, and I like how um, me and my dad get to watch the whales. This is a pretty cool area to live, isn't it? Yeah. Celebrate the coast and the whales. For you being a council member here, I know you're passionate about our community, Brian. Whale of a day, you've been to many. Um, doesn't get any better than this. Uh, we've been going to whale of a day since even before Ian was born. He's eight years old now, but I've always loved this day. And today is about as perfect a day as, as you can get. We've already seen some sea lions out in the kelp. They've seen two whales already this morning that have uh, actually started heading north. And I understand that the total whale count is over 800 this year, which is a huge increase over what the 10-year average is. In fact, I think this year might be the largest count the, uh, that they've had on record. Is that correct? I was, I was actually earlier on the patio where they count, they're counting the whales, and I was told that if they get 14 more southbound whales, they will break a whale record for the, for the last 16 years in terms of the numbers are that high, which is a good thing. And of course, being here at the Interpretive Center, there's no better place to try to see them. I, I think that's true, and I think it's a testament to, to how much attention we pay as a community to the environment and celebrating days like Whale of a Day, which really is about the environment and, and our wildlife and, and protecting that. And, and we've got a lot of other wildlife here at Whale of a Day. We've got the, the famous golden eagle out there. We've got the llamas. We saw a hedgehog, uh, snakes, ferrets, tortoises. What, do you, what have you been looking at? Um, I've just been walking around with my dad. Have you learned any special tips for trying to see the whales out there? I have a hard time. Everyone said, there she blows, and then I, I miss it. No, I haven't, actually. <laughs> Maybe your dad can teach you a few things. It looks like he's doing that all the time. Um, as we sort of wrap this up, Brian, right here at the Interpretive Center, we always refer to this as a jewel of the community. It's an amazing resource. It, it really is, and the Interpretive Center is still relatively uh, relatively new. When we moved here back in the late 1990s, it was uh, it was still just a vision. And if you come down here now, on any day, it's a it's a fabulous place to watch the sunset. Uh, we do see whales here year round. It was last summer 
Remember when we saw the blue whales? We were actually down here that afternoon when they saw that pod of 12 to 15 blue whales. And if you've ever seen them blow, you know, blow their spouts up, it's about the size of a three-story building. I mean, it is absolutely amazing. So we come down here a lot, whether it's whale of a day or not. And we appreciate you being here. As you can see, these guys wear many hats because they're off to opening day of baseball, just as exciting. And I hear you're throwing a pitch out there. I, I've got I've got the honor of throwing the opening pitch of the season out uh, later on this morning at uh, the Silver Spur Little League uh, Baseball. So it's quite an honor. You got a lot going on as our councilman. I think you want to add just to let the community know about it, how important events like this is that our city puts these on. I mean, these are great opportunities for people to come together, not just from our own city, but from our neighboring cities also. Everybody's welcome here. And, you know, for today, everybody's a citizen of Rancho Palos Verdes, and you're all welcome. Okay, now we're not just talking about whales here, whale of a day. We're also talking dragons. And I'm here with Kathy Wolfram. She's an RPV resident, always here at Whale of a Day. But today you're wearing a different hat. You're here because you are on the L.A. Harbor Dragon Boat Club team. Talk about what this is. Well, it's a group of, um, we have both an adult team and a youth team that we get together at the Cabrilla Beach Youth Center and we go out in dragon boats. And right now we're practicing once a week on Sunday mornings at 8.15. We're always looking for able-bodied, uh, enthusiastic people that want to come out and join us for a good upper body workout and enjoy the camaraderie of being in a boat with 16 other people and paddling for an hour. So yeah, it's a great sport. We love it. And you also said you're building this sport. You're trying to get a youth club going. Exactly. We, we're especially looking for the ages between 10 and 15. And um, we're going to have them start working out in April. And then they're, they're going to be working out and building up to doing a competition in July in Long Beach, which is a world uh, competition. People fly in from Taiwan, from all over the world to compete in the dragon boat races. Very exciting. I asked you earlier, I know our own RPV TV station manager, Mark Dottie, is part of your club, yes. and you talked about me about joining. I said I have no upper body strength. What do you really need to do to be part of a team like this? Well, the willingness to get up early on a Sunday morning and participate is like, you know, a key factor. And then um, the also wanting to have fun and willing to put in some work to get in shape. I mean, all of us started with, you know, little to no upper body strength. And then over time, we've developed it. So, um, but you also use your core a lot. You use your thighs. You use your back. So, yeah, you get a full body workout. Incredibly rewarding to be out, I would think, on the sea. We live in this beautiful coastline you get to really appreciate it and take it in. You, you're here in RPV. What do you love about Whale of a Day? Oh, I love Whale of a Day because I love that we're honoring the whales that are so precious and that they need recognition. We need to save our whales and save our ocean environment so that they can flourish and that our children and their children can enjoy the whales for years to come. And that's another great thing about going out on the dragon boats, that we have a seal that follows us almost every Sunday morning. Sometimes we'll have dolphins pop up. It's a very quiet time. The ocean is calm. There's pelicans. There's birds. I mean, it's, it's almost, it's like our Sunday morning spiritual experience, too, being out on the water. Well, I'm sure as you share this experience with the people here at Whale of a Day, you're going to sign up new paddlers. The best Come way, down and, sign up. and check out your website. Oh yes, we have on Facebook, LA Harbor Dragon Boats, and you could also um, contact us through that. So it's great to be here with our Mayor Pro Tem, Jerry Dehovic, at Whale of a Day. Are you having a good time? Your family's here? Loving it, Liz. Every time we come down here, it's just uh, loads of fun. We got a beautiful day today, and kids running around screaming. It uh, should be a, a day to have a great time. And of course the city celebration, um, the city always trying to do community events. How important is this to have things like this? Well, I think it's very important. Like I mentioned uh, many, many times, you know, RPV is a fairly large city by geography. We've got 13 and a half square miles of city. We got 43,000 residents, not, not like LA, but that's still a big city. And these types of events bring the small town feel and Neighbors get to talk to neighbors and kids get to mingle and it's it's really uh, 
something that brings the community together, and RPV does that very well, not only here at Whale of a Day, but uh, the July 4th celebration is the, very similar in nature. Of course, you come here, and this is a celebration of the whale migration, and just to be on our beautiful coast, and we see what, you know, the jewels that we have dotting along the coast. Um, for you as a council member, obviously preserving that, and making sure that we always have this is important, I would think. Absolutely. You know, we have the 1,400-acre Portuguese Bent Preserve. We've got 16 parks. Uh, you know, we want to maintain that semi-rural atmosphere, and it's, it's something that we work very hard uh, at uh, on this council and, and me personally and previous councils. So I think everybody's on the same page with respect to that. We don't want to see a, a huge amount of build-out, and I think we're pretty near build-out in our PV, so that's a good thing also. Um, as we stand by the PVIC building here, a beautiful um, place to come, what a museum. Um, you bring your family here, I'm sure. What do you enjoy most about having this interpretive center right here? You know, I could tell you, my daughters regularly, on just out of the blue, they say, Daddy, let's go to the Interpretive Center. And it is such a great interactive place. It is a jewel for RPV. And, uh, you know, it's only getting better and better. The docents do a great job. This is this event, you know, my hat's off to the docents. is co-sponsored by the docents, and they're all working very, very hard. I see them all floating all over the place. Um, but, you know, this really is a jewel, and there's going to be some good things happening on the on the uh, uh, open space over here, there's going to be some planning. You know, we had the Annenberg situation that didn't work out several years ago. and uh, But there's a lot of good ideas and a lot of input, so it's only going to get better as time goes on. Well, we appreciate all you're doing. Um, are you any good at spotting the whales out there? I don't, I'm not very lucky at it, but they've seen quite a few already today. You know what I do when I hear that bell, I run over there. But uh, <laughs> I, I haven't, you know, it's funny, from my house, actually, my sister last weekend saw a couple whales. and. You know, again, I ran over when she said I didn't see him, but she saw him. So they're, they're there, and I think we've got a huge whale count this year. So hopefully the girls see something here today, and hopefully I see some too. But I, I have a picture in my house, not too far off the coast from where I live, that shows the whale spouting taken from a helicopter. So that's really, really cool. The whales are there. All right, we'll go have fun. Thank you so Thank much. You Okay, now we're going to have a great history lesson here of Whale of the Day with Don Christie. Many know him in the community. He is an author. He is an amazing, uh, what else do you want to call you, historian. And uh, he also happens to be the step-grandson of Frank Vanderlip. Talk about the 100th anniversary of the Palos Verdes Peninsula right now. That's we're celebrating. I'd be glad to. Uh, Mr. Vanderlip purchased Pal uh, Palos Verdes in 1913, November 1913 from Mr. Bixby. Mr. Bixby uh, was part of the Bixby Phillips Ranch, which is located over by the general store. And uh, he purchased the uh, property, he purchased Palos Verdes. It was 16,004 acres. He paid $2.4 million for it, which break, breaks down to $150 an acre. Uh, he was one of the 50 investors. One of the investors with them was J.P. Morgan and Mr. Vanderlips. Uh, sister Ruth. Well, Ruth decided if she was going to invest, she wanted oceanfront property. And let me show you the oceanfront property that she purchased. This is the uh, Portuguese Point. This was the house that Mr. Vanderlip gave Ruth Vanderlip to to uh, purchase right here, and she was the very first land cons conservationist of Palos Verdes. She owned all this. This point here, uh, Portuguese Point, was originally going to have a 55 room mansion, but because of the stock market crash in 1929, it didn't happen. There was going to be four mansions in Portuguese Bend, again, because of the stock market crash in 1929, none of the mansions were built. Let me take you through uh, our little history exhibition over here. Amazing exhibition here for the community. Thank you. This is the Ishibashi family along with some of the other Japanese farmers. They were actually here before Mr. Vanderlip purchased Palos Verdes. Mr. Bixby and Mr. Phillips encouraged Japanese farmers to come and farm Palos Verdes and they did so starting at about 1906. The Ishibashi families were the most prominent of families. They were the only ones that came back and farmed their property after uh, World War uh, after World War II and World War One. Uh, this is the uh, these were uh, architectural renderings of the big mansion Mr. Vanderlip was going to build. Uh, at the far end of Portuguese Bend where uh, the riding stables are. He wanted to uh, give uh, 
uh, Randolph Hearst a little run for his money, and this was going to be a 60-bedroom mansion. As you can see how big it is, here's a person standing. It gives you the scope of how big this mansion was going to be. This is the coastline here before even Marineland was built. This is the Bixby Phillips Ranch where Mr. Vanderlip purchased Palos Verdes. This is our old living room in 99 Vanderlip Drive, the house that Mr. Vanderlip grew up in in the summertime when he was a child. He bought the house back in 1977 from his brother. This is the, some of the furniture that was there. This is our famous leather chair and some of the Asian motif that was decorated by Mr. Frank Vanderlip's wife. And this is a lamp. I was going to ask you, um, as you're part of this family, one that Frank Vanderlip stated yeah. on his first sighting of the Palos Verdes uh, Peninsula in 1913. Why don't you share that? Okay. Well, he came here in 1913 after he saw pictures. What he had done is sent his scout, Mr. Benedict, to come and come all the way from the East Coast to Palos Verdes in a Model T and then eventually on, on back of a donkey and a, and a horse and scout all of Palos Verdes. So here's his quote from when he first saw Palos Verdes on his own. He was very taken by it. He talked about how beautiful, you know, more than the ordinary. Thank you so much. 100th anniversary of Palos Verdes. You have a website, Vintage Palos Verdes. Vintage Palos Verdes. Pen, vintage Palos Verdes. Com. Little guppy here at Whale of a Day. We've got Lucas Dottie with mom and grandma. How's it going? It's going really well. It's been a fun day. And uh, has Lucas spotted any whales yet? Well, he was sleeping when we saw one earlier, so in his dreams. He was having a whale of a nap. What do you think of the celebration? I know you've come here many times. Oh, it's a great way to come out and appreciate the majestic animals that are whales and get involved with the community and see people that you haven't seen in a while. And it's just a lot of fun. Great for kids. And I think you're having too fun of a time. I think you're meant to be on camera. Lucas, can we say whale of a day? Whale of a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now being joined by Council Member Anthony Mizitich. We're back here at the Ask Your City Councilman a question. It's your shift right now. How's it going? It's going great. Uh, look at all the, the people around uh, the Well of the Day event. Uh, they're passing through. Uh, we're passing out literature here regarding our 40th anniversary, Liz. And, uh, and when we do that, they also get some goodies and some water. So we're, so we're keeping them refreshed. I was going to ask you if you had any Well of a questions, but you said right now, you know, not much happening, which must mean you're doing a great job. Well, I'm, I'm doing my duty. That, that's, that, that's all I could say. I'm doing my duty. What do you enjoy most about coming to Whale of a Day? I know you've been coming here with your family and celebrating 29 years of this event. Well, I, I think the booths themselves uh, are very interesting. Many of them are manned by um, uh, volunteers from the city. But the other interesting booths, you know, regarding wildlife and uh, uh, just other natural things, I find fascinating. My favorite here, my favorite is the uh, birds of prey, the uh, l l little hawks and falcons. I'm uh, I'm fascinated with this. I have been since uh, I've been a little kid. Always wanted to you know do falconry, and uh, I did actually get to do that in Scotland one time. But uh, I'm just fascinated, and it's a great booth that when you walk into the event, it's always there welcoming you. This is our 25th anniversary, and it's the city of RPV's 40th anniversary, and it's the 100th anniversary of the Vandalip purchase of the huge chunk of Palos Verdes. A really cool coincidence. A lot of milestone celebrations here. In fact, it's the 29th of Whale of a Day. I think the American Cetacean Society said this is 30 years for them being here counting the whales. But let's focus on your organization. Very important that we have the Land Conservancy on the peninsula. Really, what is your mission? What do you do? Well, the idea is to save the open space and take care of it get the plants and vegetation back there for the animals that need to be here and it's also to encourage people to come and enjoy it because when you enjoy something you learn about it when you learn about it you get to love it and when you love it you really help take care of it um, you mentioned earlier here's 25th anniversary you're going to be celebrating anything special you want the community to know um, events that you're doing working on every event this year will be branded uh, with our silver and sage ideas, silver anniversary and all the sage we plant out here. Uh, we have a 25-year logo added to our logo 
and in the color of the golden poppies of California. I also notice as I'm looking at this great display you have, you're educating the public. Uh, 2013 Earth Day celebration, what's happening with that on Saturday the 20th? Yeah, I'm looking at your flyer right now. I guess from 9 to noon, you're inviting the community to White Point. So we can post that up so that the community can know. You have so many things going on, hikes people can take, um, things that the community can participate through the Land Conservancy. You know, I signed up for that event, and I don't know the details. Okay. So I'm going to be there and do whatever the staff tell me to do. Well, that's okay. And I guess the best way to find out about anything that you can do with the Land Conservancy is to go to your website? Absolutely. PVPLC.org. Um, I'm looking at here, we've had lots of visitors to your booth. I mean, this is all, this is what we see here in our backyard? Uh, don't see all of these butterflies and insects here, but everything else, yes, we do see this here. And you know, this table seems big, but two or three weeks ago we had a volunteer organization day and we had about five times, five times the length of tables of opportunities for people to volunteer. I knew we had a lot of stuff. I walked into that room that morning and I was stunned at how much stuff was out there. Lots of opportunities to get involved. Seeing all the butterflies, that gray fox is just amazing. Um, and seeing the butterflies though reminds me of all of your efforts with the PV Blue. How is that? PV Blue is doing very well. It used to be thought to be extinct. It was rediscovered about 20 years ago and we now have saved lots of open space. We know how to grow the plants that those butterflies need to live and breed, grow their nests, so that when they hatch, there's food and a place for them to build their nests. I'm looking at your wonderful uh, uh, motto here, preserve, restore, educate, and enjoy. What do you enjoy most personally, Bruce, being part of this organization? You know, I, I live over near White Point Nature Preserve, and Almost every morning, I'm out walking on that preserve, about 7, 7.30 in the morning. And it's, I told this to John the other day, it's the best possible way to start my day. It's fresh, it smells good, the views are fabulous, it's quiet, it's wonderful. I hear you, I live by Ladera Linda and I'm in the trails every day. And it's, it's amazing what you see. You feel like you don't even live in Los Angeles. It's unreal. All right, we'll let you get back. Anything you want to add um, that you want the community to know? Obviously, celebrating 25 years and just how the community really could get involved with what you do. Well, a lot of what we do has to do with collaboration with other people. Uh, our work with the city of RPV is the perfect example. We can't do what we would do without them. We wouldn't be having this conversation without them. Also. Last year alone, we had over 14,000 hours in volunteer time. That is tremendously helpful for what we do. And those are just two examples of the collaboration and working with people. It's great fun. And this is great fun here at Whale of a Day. I'll let you get back to, to enjoying it. Thank you, Bruce. What I'm enjoying most is putting the little blue butterfly tattoos on the kids' arms and telling them the story of the butterflies. And they're just, oh, really? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get a tattoo now. <laughs> Come on, I'll give you one. Cindy, tell us about these great shirts. The design is beautiful. I know every year um, they sell out like crazy. They do, and this is our fifth year of selling t-shirts here. The design is by my brother, actually, whose yep. name is Brett Bednors. And this year is number two in a series of five that he's going to be doing, uh, depicting the various whale um, visitors we have here at PVIC. And this is a breaching humpback whale. What inspired him to work with whales this way? Well, actually, it was because we asked him if he would be happy to do some work for us for Whale of a Day. And so he's been designing different shirts with different whale motifs for the last couple of years. Okay. Where, does the, where do the funds go to? Uh, right here to Los Terminos. Okay, for our various educational programs. Our biggest project is our effort to raise awareness for the vaquita. And what the vaquita is, is the world's most endangered marine mammal. It is a porpoise that lives in the Gulf of California, in between Baja California and mainland Mexico. And there's only 190 left. You want to tell me about it? We'll talk about that, Austin, how you got involved too with trying to save the vaquita. Well, I got involved here because um, William, viewed, um, like around uh, years ago, he um, asked me to um, whether if I wanted to join the Vaquita, um, the Musco Club. And um, later on, when I got the email about the Vaquitas, I got really interested, and that's when I decided that I should join. 
and help out to save the vaquita. If you want to learn about the vaquita, the best thing to do is to go on to www.vivavaquita.org, which has all this information about the animal. It's in such dire straits. There's only 190 individuals left in the world. They're facing problems from fishing net entanglement that's completely accidental. And if we don't do something about them, they will be extinct by 2016. Austin and William, I know you're both Peninsula High students, very passionate about the environment, the marine world here. Um, I, William, I know you're also wearing two hats here because you are a junior docent yes. serving um, as a volunteer with Los Serenos to Point Vicente. Talk about being a junior docent and what that means. Well, being a junior docent is a really fantastic opportunity to share knowledge about the peninsula. What we do is we're trained by a very highly you know, respected personnel at Los Serenos de Point Vicente. What we do is we give tours of the Interpretive Center, which is over that way, and we um, also help give nature hikes in the Abalone Cove area, the Forest All Nature Reserve, and some other places like that. And it's just a really wonderful way to get information about the peninsula, like its history, its biology, and then share that with the public. Here now with a RPV resident who grew up on the hill, grew up surfing. He's a professional surfer and he's also very passionate a bit about whales. Um, you're part of Surfers for Cetaceans. Talk about what that is. Uh, yeah, well, Surfers for Cetacean is basically um, uh, what it says. It's a group of, inter it's actually an international group uh, founded by my friend Dave Rostovich. He's a great uh, philanthrop philanthropist of nature, environmentalist, and one of the best surfers in the world. And uh, basically it's, you know, bringing this giant network of surfers from around the world to help fight against uh, the whaling issue, pollution, um, work on, you know, some of the shipping lane uh, issues going on right now, uh, ship strikes and whatnot. And um, we basically try to strategically uh, do our work around the world through different groups of activated people and surfers. So are you optimistic about the plight of whales and the future of whales? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you have to be, you know, I, I, I'm just looking at the, you know, the, um, the Tahitian uh, humpback. They, they've really gone from really small numbers to, uh, you know, thousands of population. The gray whale this year had one of the best years, you know, that there's been in, in uh, quite some time with record numbers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very hopeful that, you know, whales in the ocean are going to be a healthy place. In all your years of surfing, Alex, tell us about the Junior Dosen program, how long it lasted and what you guys learned. Um, it's really fun and it's a good way to get involved with the community and it was a six week training program and then you work a, uh, one time a month for two hours. Okay, and then how many whales have you seen since you started this or maybe just even growing up here because you live across the street? Yeah. Um, I don't know, when, I, when we were here we saw like maybe, we saw like two like every time we were here and that's really good so, but Overall, I've maybe seen like 20 whales. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of whales. This year especially, we're seeing a lot of whales that are migrating. Um, it's a pretty exciting time, and uh, one of the whale watchers told me that this is actually one of the best places to see them in the whole state. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, because it's better for whales to be going around Catalina, but they like to come by and say hi to all of us at Whale of a Day. We are so blessed here to be living in Rancho Palos Verdes and on this peninsula. This is actually a celebration of Many groups and many environmental groups throughout the whole South uh, Southern California area. So it's a great, exciting day. It's your turn to sit here, and it's uh, meet the council. So I know they're going to be lining up to talk to you, Susan. And uh, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll ask you your first question. It'll be my last question. What do you love most about Whale of a Day? What do I love most about Whale of a Day? Well, for me, it's very mem memorable. Um, I love the fact that we had the opportunity with this one of the best places to sight whales in all of Southern California with the naked eye. Was it? It's over 700 now, right? Oh, yeah. it counts way up. I mean, they may be breaking a record for 16 years now. There's so many whales this year. That that little concept whale of a day, um, just to say it and say it over and over again, it brings to mind immediately the Palos Verdes Peninsula. So when people hear whale of a day, just think Palos Verdes. Now being joined by some expert whale watchers, they have a lot of facts to share with us. We're going to start with you. Tell us about some things you're learning about the whales. Today is the 29th annual whale of a day. A whale's tongue can weigh 2,000 pounds. The whales migrate south to give birth in the warm waters of Baja, California. Whales can be seen with the naked eye from our location. Point Vincente is the best place in California to see whales. The whale's main food source is krill found in the Bering Sea. 
Our PV is the best place to watch whales. And these girls are the best. Right on. Woo! This was an amazing day, but all good things have to come to an That's end. That's right, Liz. So much fun here today. The kettle corn rocked it. It was so good. Yeah. And of course, all the whale sightings. Amazing. I was going to ask you, what was the highlight for you? It was definitely the whale. That bell kept ringing. People were seeing whales. It was awesome. Well, I did enjoy seeing the whales, but yeah. also I have to say, I got my first tattoo. She did. I hear they're addicting, Liz. Are you going to get From some the more? Land Conservancy. We'll Very see. Nice. We'll see. All right. Well, that'll do it for us here at the 29th Annual Whale of a Day. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Sorrell. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.